Good morning. We are now in Yellowstone Mountainside KOA on the west side of Yellowstone, actually in West Yellowstone, the city. So we thought we'd be kind of smart today and get a really early start and beat the crowd because we heard yesterday the line was like two hours just to get in there. So anyways, we're up nice and early. Got all our stuff packed. Brought in, bring in a lunch, got extra water. We're heading to Old Faithful Inn. There's a restaurant there right by Old Faithful. So we thought we'd catch them when they open and uh, have breakfast. And it's gonna take us about an hour just to get there. And then we're going to head over to the visitor center and try to get some information on what to do, where to go, get the best bang for our, for our buck. So you can see Mark is at it already. He's packing up the car. And here we go. He got down on one knee, 11, 12, 11, and her tears welled up, and her heart jumped to heaven. It was supposed to rain. Well, there's clear skies today. So it's about quarter to six right now. It'll take us about an hour to actually get to the um, Old Faithful Inn for breakfast. So the sun is up already. So we're thinking we're being really smart by actually leaving. It's uh, about quarter to six right now, trying to beat the crowds. So um, we'll, we'll see how that works out. <laughs> So as you can see, there's no line. That's how it is when you're super early. There's actually only one lane open with no one in the booth. So even though we were ready with our National Park Senior Pass, we ended up just driving through. All right, we are in the park. And as you can see, there is not a crowd. So I did record the, I thought I recorded as we were going through, but um, I didn't push the button. That's important. <laughs> That's important. But anyways, there was nobody there, nobody in the booth. Just one of the lanes was open. We slid right in. Here we go. It's quarter to, what time is it? Uh, it's 6. 6.08. 6.08. It's cool with the sun shining through there. Oh, pool outs are on that side. <laughs> this was the only day we drove in this early. The other days it was about 8 or 9 o'clock and there were no lines or there were very short ones. But I highly recommend you get up early and drive in as the sun rises. The sun shining through the trees is just incredible. Also, the air was really cool. It was, I don't know, maybe about in the 40s, upper 40s. So with that and the steam from all the geysers and the hot springs, it was just so magical and mystical. You just don't see this when the air warms up later in the morning. Highly recommend, gotta get there early. We ready to go? Mark. What? Mark, Mark. What? Is that a new shirt? Oh. Good God. <laughs> Sorry. Good God, man. <laughs> so now we are finally arrived at the Old Faithful Inn. It was built in 1903 to 1904, and they used local logs and stone. What a beautiful building. Huh, look at those. What is that, spirit orbs? Spirits from the, the Old Faithful Inn? Mm -hmm. 
So when you come in, you're in this lobby with a massive stone fireplace and a handcrafted clock that's made of copper and wood and wrought iron. We asked somebody who worked there if they were actually open during the winter, and they said this huge structure is just way too hard to heat. As you can see, they have a really nice buffet here for $15. So we decided to go with the hikers special and mainly because the buffet is just too tempting. This is... Because we're hikers. <laughs> I mean, we're going to go 20, 30 feet at least on these boardwalks. We need a hikers special. Truly, we don't trust ourselves with the buffet anymore. So the summer season begins in late April just as the roads are cleared of snow. And there are actually nine lodging facilities with over 2,000 rooms in Yellowstone National Park. But in the winter, Yellowstone has a more intimate experience with the snow, and they keep only two lodging facilities open just before Christmas, and then they close again in early March. Sue. So we're ready to walk out to the parking lot. And for whatever reason, we decided to go this way. This is the deck. This is the observation deck for Old Faithful. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I don't know. So, which one's Old Faithful? This way? Straight ahead. Can't miss it. You can miss it a lot of times because it goes off so many times a day. Yeah. So uh, here's uh, one of my pro tip number ones when visiting Yellowstone. You can see that these RVs have parked relatively close to Old Faithful, which is in the distance. We're going to walk on a boardwalk. Uh, next time I'm going to park like right in front of this guy. So, uh, you know, you might want to do that when you come here. You can't do that, Mark. Oh, you, oh, you can't? You can't do that. Okay. Don't give them bad advice. Come on. All right. <laughs> so we got geysers happening everywhere. So obviously we got here early enough. The line is getting long. When we got here, no line got right in. Beautiful. Where are you going, honey? Old Faithful is part of the Geyser Hill Loop Trail. I read that it's at the heart of the world's greatest concentration of geysers. Simply amazing. There's a Geyser Hill walk. I think it actually happens every morning. And it's ranger led. Lots of information. Here's actually the beginning of the trail. You can see all the geysers going off in the background. So we've got about 20 minutes before Old Faithful goes off again. Sue, are uh, we ready to go on the boardwalk and check things out? I'm ready. Let's check to make sure that mission accomplished on not looking like a tourist. Uh, oh no, totally 
totally look like like one of the locals. I am a local. Perfect. A local in, in Yellowstone. A local. Geyser Hill has about 30 geysers. Some of them are large, some are small, and there's hot springs there too, with a variety of colors and sounds and even the smells. Most people take about 30 minutes to an hour, from what we've heard, to uh, make the Geyser Hill Loop and then to return back to Old Faithful. Definitely easy and a beautiful walk. So we learned that the blue color is the hottest water and here we have an example of a pond literally boiling and then through the crevasse it will travel down by gravity to that river in the back that I'm sure is ice cold water. So this is Grand Geyser, not as predictable as the Old Faithful, therefore not it's the Grand Faithful Geyser. And we'd probably have to sit here for another two hours waiting for it to erupt. All right, another pro tip we have, pro tip two, is when you're at the Grand Geyser and you're trying to figure out where to seat, where to sit, sit on this type of a stool rather than this one. Youch. Youch. Good advice, Chan Man. <laughs> She's ready to blow. Come on, let's make it happen. Perfect place to relax. So this is the perfect spot to take a little break. This chair is warm. The sun is out, but it's got a nice breeze, perfect scenery. There's only one problem, the sound of all that water. All right, so we got here about 6.45 this morning. And it's now about 3.45 we're heading out and it looks like that was a smart move because look how congested it is. It's like one car after another slowly going along. He got down on one knee, 11, 12, 11, and her tears welled up. And her heart jumped to heaven, it was supposed to rain. But there's clear skies today. He was a rare gem, Romanian descent, he was a good 